all over Britain, animals are being born, rearing the next generation, from cute little kittens to gorillas, from cats to cart horses, in zoos, on farms, in people's homes, and out in the wild. We're going to see some amazing births and the first few weeks of animal babies' new lives. As a working vet, I know that not everything goes to plan. Along the way, there'll be problems and happiness, joy and sorrow. We'll share in the highs and lows of these new arrivals as we travel across the UK, bringing you brand new babies of every shape and size. Coming up, we meet two Labrador puppies with the potential to save lives. And a newly born baby giraffe struggles to its feet for the first time. But now we're off to Colchester in Essex to see a very unusual looking critter. Just under a metre high and weighing around 200 kilos, the pygmy hippo is tiny compared to its larger cousin, which can weigh up to 10 times more. Pygmy hippos come from West Africa, and their population is under threat. Deforestation and hunting by man mean that they're very rare in the wild. But there's hope. Here at Colchester Zoo, they've got two pygmy hippos. They've got Venus, a female, and their male here is Freddy. And this is the female, Venus. Now, they have to keep them apart here because in the wild, they would only come together for mating. And they can be very territorial and fight. She's gorgeous, isn't she? There is excitement in the air because Venus became pregnant six months ago. But it was a long road to get there. She didn't always get on so well with Freddy. We actually had the male and the female separate for about eight or nine years because when they were first introduced, there was quite a lot of aggression. Once we finally mixed them, we had a successful birth of Io, a young female. Sadly, it didn't work out. She ended up with a problem with her intestines and she only lived for a year. The following year, Venus had another baby. It didn't manage to suckle and only lived a week. Now Venus is pregnant again, and having lost two babies previously, the keepers are watching on anxiously. Hello, gorgeous. Are you hungry? They're doing everything they can this time around to make sure this baby will have the best possible chance. We're very much fingers crossed, third time lucky. We've just got to make sure she's happy, she's fed, she's watered. As long as she's happy, there's no reason why the pregnancy shouldn't go well. Three weeks later, and Kelly is harvesting leaves for Venus. And she's got some really good news for us. Venus actually went into labour on the 5th of September, and we waited around all day. By quarter to seven at night, she still hadn't had the baby. She seemed very calm, she knew what she was doing, but obviously us keepers were panicking just a little bit. We left her to it, and the following morning, we came into a very, very big, healthy baby. And here she is, our first sighting of the brand new baby pygmy hippo. When they're born, they weigh only around four kilos. But by the time she is fully grown, this little girl could increase her weight by 50 times. I have not stopped smiling since baby was born now. Everything she does is just so cute and adorable. It's probably just what it's like for any parent watching their child take their first steps, but obviously Mayan's got four feet. The pop is now 11 days old and it's time for a swimming lesson. But before swimming begins, some adjustments to the pool are needed. OK, 
Okay, so uh, this is our big grand scheme to try and help our baby um, in the swimming pool. Um, it's quite deep round the back, so the objective is to put this in. It's got a nice area so that she can hopefully sit on it and take a bit of a rest. So we're going to see how that works today. So, yeah, I think if we go over here with it, drop it down here. Drop it in that corner. Fingers crossed it will just go in without me going in with it. It's just not as stable as I'd quite like it to be. Better. Yeah, OK. It's actually us that get more worried than her. She's fine. We're, like, totally overprotected parents, yeah, completely. Really, really. Excellent. Right. In the wild, pygmy hippos are often born in the river, so they learn to swim before they can even walk. This one, though, was born on dry land. Come on, then. These are the best times. This is why I'm a zookeeper. Good girl. Too cute. Look at her. This is a very tense time for the keepers, as the baby takes its first tentative steps into the water. She's still very young, and they don't know how well she'll cope. Who's the little one? The pup dives under the water, but then disappears. She's stuck under mum and can't reach the pot for protection. She bobs up briefly, and then, to everyone's relief, she seems to get some purchase on the flower pot so she can breathe but the keepers are worried that the baby will get exhausted from all the ducking and diving, so they need to get her out quickly. Venus, come on, out you come. There's a good girl. Hi, Vini. If the keepers can tempt Mum out of the water, the pup should follow. Venus, it's time to get out. But Mum and the pup aren't budging, and Mum is now starting to fall asleep. Go in, baby. Come on, then. Come on. Come on. Come here. Good girl. Come on, then. What are you doing? Sleepy. You've got a tired baby. Venus, come on. Unable to coax them out with food, Sarah and Angela are worried that the pup is getting tired and cold, so they resort to plan B, using a net. <laughs> I'm going to get your baby. Scoop her out. That's it. Take her out then, Venus. <laughs> Just like that. Don't you dare. Oh, she just don't want to get out. Venus! Come on! Sarah, what about if we got a third person and we came from under here with the net? Yeah. We can stand there and net her out and then yeah. someone can drop this when we're under the bridge. Yeah. They've got to be quick. Pygmy hippos can turn aggressive when defending their young. Hi, right, Beanie, come here. Easy, good girl. Come here. You got some brows up there? OK. Ah. Go. Right. Ouch. Okay, drop it. Oh, right, you want to run around against the scales? Is that locked, Anne? Because she can lift it. Having survived her swim, it's time to weigh the baby to check she's growing properly. My God, she's over ten kilos. So she's now 10.5 roughly, but she's off the scale, so it's hard to tell. As long as her health stays the way it is, I mean, you can obviously see if an animal loses condition. So unless we notice her losing weight, then we just won't worry about weighing her anymore. So obviously keep an eye for suckling and things like that. And she's doing really well, very strong in the pool, a really independent little character. Reunited with Mum at last, the pygmy hippo cub is now three weeks old and doing really well. It's great news for everybody. Even Dad Freddy seems pleased. For thousands of years, humans have relied on our doggy companions' fantastic sense of smell to help them find lots of things, whether that's lost people, drugs or even bombs. 
but more recent research has shown that this amazing sniffing ability has enabled our best friends to turn into almost medical professionals. Today, some very special animals are arriving at a medical charity in Aylesbury. Oh, look at you two. These two eight-week-old Labradors, Quiz and Dan, are to be part of a unique program to help detect disease. So the reason for Labradors being so good is because they are so loving and outgoing as well. You can throw anything at these dogs pretty much and they'll respond perfectly. These puppies have the potential to save lives in the future. The idea behind the charity began 10 years ago when its founder, Dr Claire Guest, encountered a remarkable phenomenon. It all started with her friend's dog licking at a small mole on her leg. As it turns out, that mole was the early onset of skin cancer. It's an incredible story. I had a friend and colleague who was warned about um, a malignant melanoma on her leg by her pet Dalmatian dog. And uh, one day when we heard a Dr John Church, and he asked, is there anybody out there who might be able to assist me in the future in training dogs to detect cancer? And I leapt at the chance. The fact that dogs could detect cancer was remarkable. So the potential of man's best friend now became apparent. Once we realised that dogs could smell cancer, we started to look at other ways in which we might be able to help people. Seal's nose, like all dogs, is thousands of times better than ours at picking up smells in the air. And this is why Claire has been able to train her fantastic dog, Daisy, to detect cancer. Hopefully, this is the sort of thing that Dan and Quiz, our pups, will be trained to do as well. So these are urine samples. One of these samples is actually from somebody who's, uh, who's been in hospital and they have cancer. And what we're training the dogs to do is to detect the difference between urine samples that come from people with, who are healthy or have other conditions and somebody who has cancer. Each place on the carousel has a number and I'm placing the urine samples onto the carousel. Claire puts the urine sample in all the slots except number three, where she puts the cancerous specimen. Here she is. Come on, Daisy. Good girl. Seek, seek. Daisy found the right pot and gets her treat. Hopefully, Quiz and Dan will be as talented. They're being assessed today to see if they too can become medical dogs. Good puppies. Just like young Molly here. Molly is nine year old Stephen's medical dog. Stephen has type 1 diabetes, and Molly can smell if his blood sugars are too high or too low before anyone else has noticed. At home, she's trained to fetch his medical kit. Out and about, she pulls a toggle on his belt to alert Stephen he needs medication. Before we had her, I was going right down low, and then it was hard to bring me back up. But now we've got Molly's she alerts before it, so we know um, to give me more sugar. Ready, go. Labrador puppies Dan and Quiz are at the very beginning of their journey to become medical detection dogs. First, they need to learn basic skills, such as retrieval. Good puppy! Yeah! Good puppy! Come, come. And to be able to return on command and to sit. Sit. Wait. Good boy, wait. Good boy, wait. Don't come! Good boy! Yeah! Good boy! Right, let's see what you make of the game. Ready? <gasps> Look at the game. The puppies are trained to be inquisitive by hiding treats under moving panels. This trains them to search things out. Yes, good puppy. I want the keenest to keep trying things out, good, not to give up. And she's starting to figure it out. She's starting to use her paw, her nose, her teeth. And that's a great skill for when uh, they start alerting, to keep going, you know, keep, you know, keep nagging that owner. Oh, good girl. 
Dan and Quiz are learning fast and eventually will be taught how to detect odours which could potentially save lives. I think Dan and Quiz will most likely become blood sugar detection dogs for people with very brittle type 1 diabetes. Good boy! I think the future of this is vast. I think we're only scratching the surface. Over the next few years, we're going to learn so much about the way in which dogs can help us through their detection of disease by its odour. Let's hope those two little puppies turn into little lifesavers like Molly. But our next animal we're going to see is a real high-rise star. This is Marwell Zoo in Hampshire, who told us that they had two pregnant giraffes. So we sent cameras to meet the mums-to-be and see who would give birth first. These two that are actually uh, there looking at us, um, we've got Isabella and Matilda. Both of these are pregnant. Um, Isabella's our hybrid, um, and she's got her last son in there with her Kwame. And then Matilda has already had six casts, so uh, this will be another day in the office for her when uh, number seven arrives. I've been here a year now. Unfortunately, I was away for the last birth, so I can't wait. When zoos first brought giraffes over to the UK and Europe to breed, they unfortunately didn't realise that there are nine different subspecies. And in this way, we ended up with what we call hybrids. And it's these mixed breed giraffes that have ended up dominating the population. What zoos are now trying to do is actually split them into pure breeds. And that's what they're doing here at Marwell. They've concentrated on Rothschilds because they've got a number of those already. This large one here, he's Kismet, our breeding male. Then we've got all of our females as well. He definitely has got a personality. He's very food orientated. And yeah, I'm quite bossy to the girls as well sometimes. With a gestation period of around 15 months, it's very hard to predict exactly when a giraffe will give birth. So it came as a fantastic surprise for the crowds visiting Marwell one sunny morning when just after the zoo had opened, Isabella suddenly went into labour. Whilst the drop seems severe, it is perfectly natural, and the giraffling shows its first signs of life. In the wild, they need to be up as quickly as possible to avoid predators. Isabella instinctively helps to remove the birthing membranes by grooming her newborn baby before the giraffling starts to struggle to its feet for the first time. It's not easy. Almost. Here we go. Success. The zoo asked the public to choose a name, and they decided on Olympia, as she was born in the year of the Olympics. All the herd helped to clean her, and she seems to confuse still pregnant Matilda for her mother. This is Matilda, she's also pregnant. Um, She's quite a good mum in general, so uh, eventually the baby will realise that Tilly's not quite ready to give milk yet, so she'll find her real mum. And the first feed's really important, because obviously that's um, the colostrum where she'll get um, the immunity from mum, and so it's quite important that she does get her first feed. At last, 
some food. A nice full stomach and Olympia's well on her way. A few days later, Matilda, the other pregnant giraffe, gave birth too. I've come to Marwell to see how the youngsters are getting on. There's obviously been two born this year, Amy. That must, is that an unusual year for you? Um, it varies. Obviously, gestation's 15 months, so it just... As they ends, arrive, really, really? yeah. How old's this littlest one now? He's only a couple of weeks now. And he's one of your pure Rothschilds He is one now, of our pure he? Rothschilds, okay. yeah. So this must be Olympia. This is the one that was born in front of everybody. Yes. Not many places offer that as a sort of a viewing spectacle, see a giraffe being born. Yeah, people were very lucky coming in that day. They all got to um, see it, so, oh, yeah. It is an absolutely amazing sight. Obviously, I've seen so many sort of large herbivores give birth before, but not a giraffe, and seeing that was just absolutely astounding. Yeah, it was um, quite special to watch. It was the first time I'd ever seen a giraffe give birth, so... Those legs are incredible, yeah. aren't they? They're just all, got, you know, you expect to see the, the feet and then a nose and that there's just legs, 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 legs. Yeah. Absolutely amazing how they can fold up inside. Yeah, it's quite amazing that it fits in there. <laughs> I've seen a lot of different animal births over the years, but that giraffe was extraordinary. See you next time.